Most modern cameras come with excellent built-in stabilization for shooting handheld photos and videos, but there are still times when you need a tripod. Or in my case, tripods, because I've had several new-to-me tripods come my way this year, and they each have their own features that make them attractive. So in this video, I'll be sharing four tripod options with you, ranging from $370 to as low as $117. Like most of the gear that I review on this channel, these tripods are compact and travel friendly. Because on this channel, I'm perpetually seeking out the most minimal camera gear setups for vlogging and professional photo and video work. As always, check out the description below to links to all the products, plus some discount codes, and chapter markers if you want to skip around. Tripod number one is also the most expensive on my list, and it is the brand new Peak Design Alternative Tripod by Ulanzi and Komen. This is probably the best tripod of 2022, and I have a dedicated video showcasing the 12 ways that it is better than the Peak Design tripod, and I actually have one more reason to add to the list. So to summarize my other video, the Ulanzi tripod is better because it has a panning ball head, it's slightly taller with a maximum height of 62.6 inches, it's made of carbon fiber and half the price of the Peak Design equivalent, and the newest reason, Ulanzi has added several upgrades to the tripod including a center column piece that can convert your tripod into a light stand, and a new version of the tripod with the Falcam F38 quick release ball head. Or if you bought the original Ulanzi tripod, you can upgrade it to the quick release version by purchasing the ball head center column separately. The Ulanzi tripod is also really lightweight at 2.43 pounds, However, it's not the lightest tripod on this list, hint hint, and when it's fully packed up, it is narrow enough to fit inside of the water bottle pocket on my main camera backpack. This is going to be a test for the rest of the tripods on this list. Let's see how it slides in there so nicely, there's even room to spare, so I just have to pull the cinch here, and it fits so well in this camera bag. The Alonzi tripod also has two cool features that the Peak Design tripod did first. It can do inverted mode to get a super low angle shot as low as six inches, and it has a tool built in just in case you need to tighten parts of the tripod or secure the camera plate to your camera. The rest of the tripods on this list are missing both of these features. Now one potential con of the Alonzi tripod is that even though it has a head for attaching your camera, it's not super easy to swap out the head for your own. To do that, you have to swap out the center column for one with a standard 3 8 inch mounting screw. On the bright side, Ulanzi often runs promos where they send you this column for free, so be sure to take advantage of that if you see it. Next up is the Manfrotto B Free 3-Way Live Advantage advanced tripod by far the longest name out of any of the tripods on this list, and also the one that has the most configurations. Now if you've been in the photo and video game for a while, then you've probably heard of Manfrotto. They're an Italian company who's been making tripods since at least the 1970s, but maybe even before that. The Manfrotto B Free line of travel tripods has a bunch of different versions, and this is just one of them. This is by far the most solid and hefty feeling tripod out of the bunch that I'm going to be reviewing in this video. Price wise, it's 259 US dollars, which is quite a bit less than the Peak Design and the Alonzi tripods. And since it's made out of aluminum alloy, it also weighs the most at 4.3 pounds. But you can get it as a carbon fiber version, which reduces the weight by a little bit more than a pound. But it jacks the price up to over 400 US dollars, thus making it even more expensive than the Alonzi and Peak Design tripods. Actually, just the Ulanzi. Peak Design is still more expensive than that. Now, this tripod has a maximum payload of 13.2 pounds, and it comes with a tripod head, which you can easily swap out if you want to. Now, speaking of the included head, that's one of the biggest advantages of this tripod. It's a hybrid photo and video head, which you can actually purchase separately for about 140 US dollars if you want to attach it to another tripod that you already own. But it's really sweet because it has this long panoramic handle and a fluid drag system on the pan and tilt axis for getting smooth video shots. The handles also fold down for compact storage. 
The head has a high 15.4 pound load capacity, so it can support pretty heavy camera and lens combinations, and it has built-in bubble levels, and it also accepts either Manfrotto-specific tripod plates or more generally used Arca Swiss plates. So the head is great, but back to the tripod itself, there are a couple of potential downsides. The maximum height of this tripod is 59.4 inches, so it's a little bit on the short side. The Ulanzi tripod is quite a bit taller, and there's also no way to do inverted mode on this tripod, so the minimum working height is 16.5 inches compared to 6 inches on the Ulanzi. Also, to get this tripod down to its shortest length of 15.7 inches for storage or travel, you have to make sure that the center column is extended and the legs fold up, which takes quite a bit of time to put the tripod away and also to set it up. Now, personally, my older travel tripods are all set up like this, but I'm noticing that newer tripods tripods are moving away from this method of storage, which I actually prefer because it saves me a lot of time for setup and putting away my tripod. And finally, when this tripod is in its smallest form, it's not the slimmest. So it definitely does not fit in the water bottle pocket of my backpack. I mean, it's kind of close, but still, it's definitely not going to fit in there. So you almost certainly need to use the included carrying case, which is actually among the nicest and best constructed carrying cases out of all of the tripods that we're testing in this video. The third tripod on this list, there's one more to go after this, is the Surui AM225 tripod. Now this is the first Surui tripod that I've ever used, and I've been very interested in them over the years because I feel like they've been known for making low-cost, high-quality tripods. And that is definitely the impression that I get from this unit. At 180 US dollars, it's a lot cheaper than the Ulanzi and Manfrotto tripods that I talked about earlier, but it can even go down to $140 or less when it's on sale, so it's super affordable. And despite being relatively low cost, this tripod is made out of carbon fiber, which is crazy because most low cost tripods are usually made out of heavier aluminum material. So at just over two pounds, this is the lightest tripod out of the four that I'm gonna be reviewing in this video. I mean, it is so light. Look at that. This Rui AM225 comes with a standard ball head that you can easily swap out if you prefer, and it has a maximum payload of 13.2 pounds. Now, in terms of visuals, I think it looks pretty darn similar to the Ulanzi tripod, except that the legs are quite a bit slimmer, and the legs also have a twist lock instead of a flip lock. Now, I used to only use twist lock tripods, but I don't know if it's just me, but I always get confused about which direction to turn these locks whenever I'm setting up my tripod. So personally, I've been preferring the flip lock instead because they're more straightforward, but that's my own preference. Packing this tripod to its minimum height of 19 inches is a breeze. You don't have to fold the legs up like you do in the Manfrotto. When this tripod is packed up, it's not the shortest of the bunch, but it is very slim, like the Ulanzi tripod, and it fits very easily into the water bottle holder on the side of my backpack. But one little shortcoming of this Surui tripod is its maximum height of 50.1 inches, which officially makes it the shortest tripod of the bunch. And that is largely because this tripod does not have a center column, but you can actually add about 12 and a half inches of height by adding this carbon fiber center column, which you have to purchase separately, unfortunately. But it attaches via the quarter 20 mount screw on the tripod, and realistically, you could actually use this with any other tripod that has has a similar attachment. But there is an extra cost of $30 to buy the center column, and then you either have to carry it around in a separate bag, it actually comes with one, or it adds a little bit of extra height to the tripod when you're storing it. So it's not exactly the best solution, but I do like that they're giving it to you as an option for getting a little bit of extra height. Now, speaking of the carrying case, they do include one, but it is super minimal, and it's made out of pretty noisy material. The last travel tripod that I'll be highlighting in this video is the Manfrotto Element Traveler Small Aluminum Tripod. 
at 145 US dollars, but often marked down to 117 dollars. It is the cheapest and smallest tripod of the bunch. But at 2.5 pounds, it's not the most lightweight, mostly because it's made out of aluminum. But there is a carbon fiber version of this tripod, which makes it weigh slightly less, but it costs more money, and it has a slightly lower payload of 8.8 .8 pounds. But other than that, the carbon fiber version looks and performs about the same as the aluminum version. Now, similar to the Manfrotto B Free tripod, the Element Traveler packs down to its smallest size by folding the legs up, which takes a bit of time, but that does give it the shortest stored length of the bunch at 12.6 inches. Now, unfortunately, the diameter is still rather thick compared to the Ulanzi and Surui tripods, so it's a bit tougher to stick this tripod into the water bottle holder, but it's not impossible. It actually fits pretty nicely. Now the maximum height of this tripod is 56.3 inches, so it's on par with the heavier, more expensive Manfrotto B Free tripod. But it still falls short of the Ulanzi and the Surui with the added center column. Now this tripod comes with a pretty basic ball head that you can swap out for your own, and it also comes with a super basic carrying case. Which after using it for several months, I gotta say that it's pretty uncomfortable to carry it for long periods of time. The cords really dig into your shoulder. so I'd recommend using a different method of carrying this tripod. So I just highlighted four different travel tripods ranging in price from as high as 370 US dollars to as low as 117 dollars. Now my personal favorite is the Ulanzi tripod since it has unique features like inverted mode and a tool that can be stored inside of the tripod. And it's also the tallest of the bunch. With that said, I also really like the Saru tripod for being the most lightweight of the bunch and also for being really low cost while still being made out of carbon fiber rather than aluminum. And as for Manfrotto, I've been using their tripods ever since I started my photography career over 10 years ago. And even though their tripod pods are a little bit dated in the designs, and they're definitely not the lightest or the smallest. They are solidly built and super reliable in the long run, which only time will tell if that's true with these other two tripods here. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, what you think of these tripods, what tripods you go to as your main tripod. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.